Um, so welcome back from your short break and congratulations again on being the top four teams for the first round. Um, and welcome to Quiz Bowl. Uh, the Quiz Bowl round will be very simple. It'll be two rounds. The first round will be a four, four team open round. So all teams will be competing in the same round. Um, and what the top two teams will go on to our final round. Um, I'll explain the rules in a little bit more detail in a second, but that's how this is going to go. The two rounds are basically identical. And yeah. So each round of the quiz bowl will consist of 19 questions divided into two sections. The first section is the non-calculation section, which is 14 questions with each problem being worth three points. During the non-calculation section, at when each after each question is read, you'll have all of the teams will have one minute to answer the question. You can buzz at any time during this one minute. Once the one minute elapses, the question will be, if no one answers, the question will be deferred and we'll be moving on to the next question. And also during the non-calculation section, if you get an incorrect answer, that's one point subtracted. There are no partial credit answers on any of the quiz bowl questions um, during the non-calculation and during the calculation section. The other section of the quiz bowl is the calculation section, which has five questions. Each problem in the calculation section is worth five points with a two minute countdown instead of a one minute countdown. So again, you can buzz at any time during this two minute countdown. No points will be subtracted for incorrect answers during the calculation section. When at, during each question, during both sections of the quiz bowl, the question will be read verbally twice and will not appear on the slide. So make sure you're paying attention while the question is being read because there are no rereads for the questions um, unless no, no team is able to answer the question. If a question is not answered correctly within the one to two minute window um, after the moderator finishes reading the question twice, um, the moderator will move on to the next question um, as mentioned before. You can buzz even before the entire question has been read. As soon as the first word of the question has been read, you are free to buzz at any time. Um, but the caveat is if you buzz in the middle of the question, the question will stop being read. So like if I get halfway through the question and you buzz, I will not read the remainder of the question until you finished answering. So that's the caveat. Um, participants in the same team are allowed to discuss with each other before buzzing in. So we're gonna have Google Meets calls available for all of your teams if you are not in the same room for you to discuss with your team before you hit the buzz button, um, which we'll explain in a brief second. So that is allowed. Um, no using the internet, obviously, and all of the previous um, cheating things that we mentioned before. Um, it's the same for the quiz bowl round. So how does point system work? Oh, yes. And then, oh, sorry. The final one is that when you buzz, after you buzz, you have two and a half seconds to start answering your the question. If you do not start talking within two and a half seconds, you will automatically defer your question. So it won't be counted as an incorrect answer, but you'll give up the opportunity for your team to answer that specific question. And then going into that, if a team answers the question incorrectly during the non non-calculation section, you'll lose one point and the opportunity will be given to the remaining teams. Um, during the non-calculation, during the calculation section, obviously you'll only lose, you'll not lose any points. If another team has already buzzed when the question is deferred, uh, I'll answer all the questions at the very end, but if another question, if another team has already buzzed when the question is deferred, like let's say four people buzz in simultaneously um, and or four people buzz in during the first section and we call in the first person and the first person either gets it wrong or defers the question, then the next person who buzzed will be called. If no other team has buzzed when the question is deferred, the question will be continued to be read. So we'll read the question one more time and any other competitor can answer when within the one minute or two minute window. If the second team that buzzed, that gets the opportunity to answer the question answers correctly, points will be rewarded and the moderator will move on to the next question and then so on and so forth. This will continue until there's no teams left um, if you answer the question incorrectly. Uh, teams can opt not to answer. So if it gets to a point where you are the last remaining team and the previous three teams have gone the question wrong or something like that, um, you're allowed to defer on the question. You can choose to abstain and not submit an answer. Uh, that way you won't lose points during the non-calculation section. We will have one warm-up question at the start of each round. So one at the start of the qualifying round and one during the final round. That'll help you kind of get into um, the shape of things and help you get a better understanding of the rules. At this point, does anyone have any questions? I know that was a lot of information. Okay, so the first question I got, are, are we allowed to do calculations on paper? Yes, you are allowed to use paper. Um, just make sure you're not Googling anything. Um, 
the second question is if one person gets it wrong, is the entire team blocked from answering from buzzing again for that question? Yes. So if you buzz, your entire team is banned from banning or buzzing for that question. So it, it'll be the first person who buzzed on your team who has the chance to answer for your team. Um, for the buzzing, we will release the buzzing system in a second. We will get to that. Um, we'll set up all the technical stuff right after this. Uh, yes. So the buzzer is always open. The buzzer is never closed. So while the other team is answering, you can hit the buzzer and you will get into the queue. So again, the buzzer is like a queue. The first person to buzz is the first in the queue. Second person to buzz is the second in the queue. Um, and basically, if the first person who buzzes gets it wrong, it'll be deferred to whoever is left in the queue. And if there's no one in the queue, um, it's opened up to whoever would like to buzz. Do we have any other questions? Cool. All righty. So we'll now move on to the technical section. Um, there are four things that we need to make sure beforehand. So right now at this point, um, every team should be entering their Google Meets call as well as being on the Zoom call. So you will be running two calls simultaneously if you would like to choose the option to talk to your team members. If you don't want that option, the teams, you don't have to join the Google Meets call, um, but just please let your Google Meets proctor know. Um, so I think all the Google Meets proctors are gonna send the Google Meets invitations in the Zoom chat at this point. So we'll give them a couple seconds. And it should have, it'll have your team name and then a Google link, and then just join the one that matches your team number. All righty. And then we'll wait until all of you are in those Google Meets calls. Once you're in, if all the Google Meets proctors can give me a thumbs up. Cool. So while you guys are joining Google Meets calls, a couple of reminders. Um, yes, Evangeline, can you send the link again as like a full link? Put the HTTPS in front of it. Fantastic. All right. A couple of reminders for these Google Meets calls. Because you're running two calls simultaneously, I need everyone to wear headphones. If you use speakers, as soon as you unmute, it's going to cause a giant ass echo sound, um, which will kill everyone's ears. So please put on some headphones if you don't have them already um, so that you don't kill all of our ears. <laughs> yes. Uh, once you have the Google Meets call running, you can kind of leave it in the background. You don't really need to touch it. I would suggest you stay unmuted on the Google Meets call throughout the entire duration of the quiz bowl. That way you don't have to keep unmuting to talk to your own team um, and it should solve any other problems. And then on the Zoom call, please do not unmute unless you're answering the question. Otherwise we would hear your entire discussion with your team. And I don't think that you want us to hear that. So yes, if your headphone jack is broken, uh, I would say join the Google Meets call on like your phone. And then use headphones through your phone if that's an option. Yeah, and that also goes, if you don't think your computer can handle running two calls simultaneously, I would suggest pulling up a second device like your phone. It doesn't matter if the Google Meets can display camera. Um, that's, the Google Meets call is solely for you guys. Um, our proctors are only there to set up the call and as well to make sure that the discussions are entirely within the rules. So yeah, you don't need to have your camera on in the Google Meets call. Cool. Are we still uh, for Google Meets proctors? Are we waiting on anybody? You can unmute. Oh, wait, you shouldn't, you don't need to, I don't think you need to download an app. You should be able to just join as on like your Chrome browser or whatever browser you have. Uh, okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, we'll give Derek a couple minutes to download the app. Um, all righty. Are all of our other teams good? Yes. Can I get a thumbs up?
Well, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. No worries. Uh, the buzzer will be distributed in a second, so don't worry about it. But yes, there's a website for buzzing. So again, I would say the suggested setup is the buzzer on one side of your screen, the Zoom on the other side of the screen, and then the Google Meets in the background. But we're just going to wait until everyone gets on the Google Meets call. We'll go one step at a time. Cool, fantastic. Uh, for our proctors, are we good? How many people are we waiting for? If you can update in the chat or feel free to unmute. Alrighty. Evangeline. Alrighty, cool, fantastic. Alrighty, so that's the first part of the technology. Um, the second thing that we're gonna be able to do is through our buzzer. So we're gonna be using a service called buzzin.live. If you've never used it before, it's a very simple website. It, there's like not that much to it. it there's just gonna be a button um, and that's gonna be your buzzer. And then as well, there are some UI components that will tell you um, who else is playing the game and things like that. But in order to join, um, please go to buzzin.live. So type in buzzin.live in your, like your browser. And the code is 880899. And then yes, when you join, please put your name as team number and then full name. That way it works a lot better on our end. My name doesn't fit in the little nickname. Okay, spot. let's just put your first name. I don't think anyone has the same first name, so. Yeah, I mean, Riddick's kind of similar, but that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Shirag, if you can rejoin, uh, I need your like number at the front of it. Also, just a quick clarification, the team number for the Eagles is actually 67. Um, not sure why 68 got sent out, but just for clarification, if we use 67 throughout the entire competition, that's because in our system, it still has you guys down at 67. Uh, it says no game is found with that code. Uh, try again, because there's like... No, wait. Yeah, I'm wrong. My bad. <laughs> okay, let me give, give me one second. I need to assign all of your teams. Alrighty, fantastic. 
Um, is everyone in the buzzer? I'm going to read off all the names that I have. If you are not on there, please let me know. So we have Anirud, Alan, Derek, William, Daniel, Riddick, Sahas, Rohan, Emily, Hannah, Arosa, Shirog, Tanish, Sam, Ritvik, and Derek. Are we missing anyone from that list? You should kick out the 68, Derek. There's two? Oh, okay. Also, you should kick out 68, Riddick. But there's no 67, really? Yeah, I'll just tell him to join oh, the 67. Okay, okay. Nice. Just let me know when you join, then we're going to do some tests. Wonderful. All right. So I'm gonna need everyone to. Okay. So I think everyone should be in the game. So I want you all to test buzz. Everyone hit buzz. All right. Fantastic. Cool. Oh. Did everyone okay. buzz again? <laughs> all right. Whoever's spamming the buzz. <laughs> Like half the field is spamming the buzz button, I guess. But yeah, so, okay, I'm going to need everyone to stop buzzing. Yes, we good. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Cool. Um, so now that everyone is in the buzzer and the um, Google Meets call, I'm just going to go over this like, one more time. Everyone should be in the buzzer. Um, you have 2.5 seconds. If you go on the top of the UI, you should see a timer, right? And it should say 2.5 seconds. Once your name is called, I'm going to hit the start button and the timer is going to go to zero. If you don't start talking, within that zero and like think words like uh mm, don't count as talking you need to start with your answer immediately within that time frame um that's the timer for that okay all righty cool a couple more details before we get started um the tally counters will verbally state the current score at the end of each section so when it gets to the end of the non-calculation section the, the tally counters will say what the current score is um competitors may also request a score update at any time through the chat Please use the chat instead of asking verbally so that you don't disrupt the flow of the competition. And the tally counter will reply through the chat as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, with well, the time 2.5 second timer is in the buzzer system. So you'll have seen it on the top of the buzzer. The one minute and two minute timers for the amount of time you have to answer the question will be on the slideshow. So make sure you're aware of that. It'll be like a video and it'll play uh, for the designated amount of time. So the timer will be on the slideshow um, on Zoom. And then as previously mentioned, the first question, which I will go over, is going to be a warm-up question, and it will not count for any points, and it's just to get used to the system. All righty. At this point, this is your final chance to answer questions before the warm-up question. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? All righty. Fantastic. Are all of our staff members ready to go? Cool. Alrighty, we'll now be starting the warm up question. Remember that this question does not count for any points. Warm up question Order these market structures in order of least competitive to most competitive. Oligopoly, perfect comp, Redvig. Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, monopoly. Uh, that is correct. Uh, if this was a real question, three points would be awarded to Team 91, I think. So now, we'll, now we will be moving on to the next question. Fantastic. This concludes the warm-up question. Now is your last chance to ask any questions before we officially start the Econ Quiz Bowl round. For our hey, can you give me a second? I have the team names down, but I have to put in the numbers so that I can get the points right. I fantastic. So give me 30 seconds. While Jessica is doing that, does anyone have any questions before we get started? Um, can I ask you something really quickly? Yes. Okay, so when we buzz in, 
do you want us like immediately start answering or like will you call on us before? i will call on you because like a lot of you will buzz at the same time and it'll just be whoever shows up at the top of my list who's the person who clicked it first so there might be like a couple second delay while i read the list so yeah but as soon as you yeah. hear your name just start answering the question i'm good on my end all right and i'll be the so. talent counter 1468 if you guys could change your name in the zoom to include 67 instead that'd be great sorry i don't know we apologize for the miscommunication i think this happened to like one or two teams not sure why the team numbers got mixed up all righty one last thing sorry yes. um you're gonna be like verbally saying out the question so like it won't be on the screen or anything it okay. will not i will say it twice if you think my pronunciation is weird or you cannot understand what i'm saying um feel free to ask for a clarification all right thank you fantastic all righty any other questions before we get started Uh, I think we have a couple of people who are unmuted. Oh, never mind. He's just not coming back yet. Okay, cool. All right, fantastic. All righty, we will now be starting the qualifying round. All of these points will count for, uh, all of these questions will count for points. Um, and again, the questions, there's 19 questions. Uh, the first section is 14 questions. Each question is worth three points with one point deducted for incorrect answers. Um, and you will have one minute to answer each question. Question one, who are all the 2021 Nobel Prize winners in economics? Who are all the 2021 Nobel Prize winners? William. Is it David Card, Guido Imbens, and Joshua Angris? Uh, that is correct. Uh, three points will be awarded to his team. We will now be moving on to the next question. Question two, name the three most recent heads of the Federal Reserve. Shirog. Uh, ben Bernanke, uh, Jerome Powell, and uh, no, Ben Bernanke, right. Janet Yellen, and Jerome Powell. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Team 67. We will now be moving on to the next question. Question three, what is Pareto efficiency? What is Pareto efficiency? William. The competitor has not answered the question within the 2.5 second window. So the question will be deferred uh, to the other team. So team 90 wanted to disqualify from the question. The question again is, what is Pareto efficiency? Shirag. Uh, Pareto efficiency is where you can't allocate some resources to another person without making another person worse off. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Team 67. We will now move on to the next question. Question four, how did the Agricultural Adjustment Act affect the prices of agricultural goods? Question four, how did the Agricultural Adjustment Act affect the prices of agricultural goods? Rohan. It increased the prices. Uh, that is correct. Three points will be awarded to Rohan's team. Question five, 
A list of answers is required for this question. List the countries, South Korea, China, and Japan, an increasing order of difference between their Gini coefficient and United States Gini coefficient. A list of answers is required for this question. List the countries, South Korea, China, and Japan, an increasing order of difference between their Gini coefficient and the United States Gini coefficient. Ritvik. South Korea, Japan, China. Uh, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from team 23. Uh, the question will now be deferred to the other teams. Shirag. Uh, Japan, South Korea, and China. Uh, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from team 67, and the question will be deferred to the other teams. Anirud. China, Japan, South Korea. Uh, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from this team. Uh, the question will now be deferred to the last team. Can we pass? Wait, it's not your team. The team remaining is 91. Yeah, that's us. Oh, I thought Ritvik said that. I don't know why. OK, you passed the question? Yes. OK. We'll now be moving on to the next question. What is the shape of the tax revenue region in a graph of trade at the world price with a tariff? Question six. What is the shape of the tax revenue region in a graph of trade at the world price with a Riddick? Is it a trapezoid? Um, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from this team. Uh, the question will now be deferred to the other teams. Ritvik, 23. Rectangle. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to team 23, and we will now move on to the next question. Question seven, list the four primary functions of the Federal Reserve. List the four primary functions of the Federal Reserve. William. So their job is to conduct national monetary policy, regulate banks, maintain financial stability, and like banking services for the federal government. Uh, could you repeat that like a little slower? I didn't catch yes. that. So conducting like the um, monetary policy, you have providing banking services, supervising banks, and then doing the um, stability finance, like financial stability for the United States. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Uh, that is correct. Three points will be awarded to his team, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question eight. When a market only contains two profit maximizing firms which produce identical products, the market is called a Girog. Duopoly. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to team 67, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question nine. When the price of oranges goes up by 10%, the demand for apples goes up by 5%. What is this effect called? Ritvik. The substitution effect? That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Ritvik's team, and we'll now be moving on to the next question. Question 10. If Congress was unable to increase the debt ceiling in time, what would have been an immediate consequence? Question, Chirag. The United States would default on its debt. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to team 67. Uh, we will now be moving on to the next question. 
Question 11. Two answers are required for this question. What is a current speculative bubble according to Nobel, winning, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman? What is one reason he cites? Two answers are required for this question. What is a current speculative bubble according to Nobel, winning, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman? What is one reason he cites? Rohan. It's when the price of um, assets or investments is too high. Um, it's higher than it should be. And one reason for this could be that um, people are like overestimating the future. Like they think it's going to be better than it should be. Um, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from his team. Also, Cheryl, this should be on the timer slide and not the question slide. Um, before we move on to the next question, can we get a, um, a score check? Uh, yes, but future reference score check should be through the chat. So would you like me to say the scores verbally then? Yeah, just say the scores now. But Okay, yeah. so right now, 23 Vink has five points, 18 Macro Minds has two points, 91 Amogus has six points, and 67 The Eagles has 10 points. Yes, so actually quick clarification. Uh, this question, I'm assuming all of you are gonna defer, but Cheryl, yeah, for future reference, as soon as the question is finished reading, it needs to go to the timer slide, that's our bad. So it is, the timer starts as soon as I finish the last word of the question on the second time. Cool. So the timer has elapsed on this question. We will now be moving on to the next question. Question 12. In the creation of monetarist school of thought, what was one reason that Milton Friedman proposed that would make monetary policy superior to fiscal policy? Rohan. The crowding out effect. So it's like, it's when with fiscal policy, it could tend to decrease, increase real interest rates, which decreases long-term growth. Well, not what we had down, but given how the question was awarded, that is correct. Three points will be awarded to his team, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 12. Nathan the lizard buys a warm rock of, with money. What function of money is used here? Rohan. The um, competitor did not answer the question within the 2.5 second timer, so the question is now deferred to Sam from Team 67. The question was not answered within the 2.5 second window. So the question will now be deferred to William from Team 91. Medium of exchange. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to William's team. And we will now move on to the next question. Question 14. What is the name of the price point where the quantity demanded starts increasing with the price in a Veblen good? Question 14. What is the name of the price point where the quantity demanded starts increasing with price in a Veblen good? There are 30 seconds remaining to answer the question.
The timer has elapsed to answer this question, and the question will now be deferred to the next question. This ends the non-calculator section. We will now be moving on to the calculation section. The tallyer will provide a current score report. Okay, so right now 23 Vink has five points, 18 Macro Minds has five points, 91 Amogus has nine points, and 67 The Eagles has 10 points. We will now be beginning the calculator section. As a reminder, during this calculation section, there are five questions in total. Each question is worth five points and no points will be deducted for incorrect answers. The timer for the question has also been extended to two minutes. Question 15. Question 15. Frank spends $300 on a trip when he could either be working for $1,000 or playing video games, an experience he values at $200. What is his opportunity cost? Sam. $1,300. Uh, that is incorrect. No points will be deducted because we are in the calculation section, but the question will not be deferred to the other teams. The question is deferred to Tanish. $1,000. That is correct. Uh, five points will be awarded to Tanish's team. And we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 16. What is the increase in the money supply if Bessie deposits $300 into Farmer John's bank and the reserve ratio is 12.5%? Question 16. What is the increase in the money supply if Ridvik? 2400 That is incorrect. No points will be deducted, uh, but the question will now be deferred to the other teams. The question is deferred to Sh Shirag. 2100. That is correct. Five points will be awarded to Shirag's team, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 17. The average price of shirts in San Francisco rose from $1,000 per article of clothing to $1,200 per article between 2090 and 2100. Find the consumer price index in this period. Question 17. The average price of shirts in San Francisco, Ritvik. 120. That is correct. Five points will be awarded to Ritvik's team. And we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 18. Alex is a potato farmer operating in a perfectly competitive market. Wanting more profits, Alex raises his price from $5 to the equilibrium price of $6. Assume that he used to sell 50 potatoes a day. What is his revenue now? Alan. 360. Um, that is incorrect. No points will be deducted, but the question will now be deferred to the other teams. Shirag. 300. That is correct. Five points will be awarded to team 67, and we will now move on to the last problem. Final question. Question 19. Originally, the supply curve for glasses for the glasses market was price equals to two times quantity plus three, with price in pounds. After an increase in supply, seven pairs of glasses are supplied at the price of one pound each. How many pairs can Dave, a glasses provider, produce for four pounds? Originally, the supply curve for gl the glasses market was price equals to two times quantity plus three, with a price in pounds. After an increase in supply, seven pairs of glasses are supplied at the price of one pound each. How many pairs can Dave, a glasses provider, provide for four pounds? It, Daniel. Uh, 68. That is incorrect. No points will be deducted, 
but the problem will now be deferred to the other teams. Uh, 28. Derek. 28. That is incorrect. Uh, no points will be deducted, but the problem will now be deferred to the other teams. Emily. Seven. Time is oh, the time has expired for that question. Uh, it will now be deferred to the final team. Team 91, Allen. Four. That is incorrect. Uh, no points will be deducted. And the question is over now, I guess. Cool. Uh, this concludes the semifinal slash qualifier round. The tallier will now declare the score and the winner. 23 Vink has 15 points. 18 Macro Lines has five points. 91 Amogus has nine points. And 67 The Eagles has 20 points. So this means that the two final qualifying teams are 23 Vink and 67 The Eagles. Congratulations. Congratulations. All righty, we will now be moving on to the final portion of the quiz bowl. Uh, for teams who are ranked third and fourth, uh, the scores will stay um, as whatever you ranked in the quiz bowl round. All righty. We're gonna take a quick pause because there also seems to be some technical issues with our quiz bowl. So Cheryl, you can go in and correct the final quiz category. Um, but at this point, um, congratulations to our quiz bowl final round competitors. For those of you who are in the final round, please stay on your team Google Meets calls. If you didn't make it, please leave the team Google Meets calls and you can still stay to watch the final round if you choose to do so. And we do encourage you to do so, um, but stay muted at all times. We will be having our final award ceremony at the end of this session um, after the final round. All righty, Cheryl, are you ready? Give me a couple more minutes. Okay. Wait, and then- uh, yeah, just I think we should take a five minute break now. If anyone needs to use the restroom or get a snack, you can okay. do so. Yes. And then Jessica, can you send me the two final team again? Okay, um, it's 23 and 67, I think, and the Eagles. Okay. So again, Vink and the Eagles, yeah. Uh, the prize money information will be distributed after the award ceremony, which is why we encourage you to stay for the award ceremony. We'll talk about it then.
for the final round, uh, is it like just like is it formatted the same way the qualifying round is with the nineteen questions and the calculated not calculated section? Yeah, so the format's exactly the same. So there's no change. The question points, everything is the same except um, now when you're the team when like you if you answer the question incorrect, it's just deferred to the other team. There's no like more buzzing. It's just the other team can choose to answer whenever they would like. It. So is there a penalty penalty still? Like getting a non-calculated questions right? Is there still what? A penalty? Uh, there's a still penalty. No, yeah, so the penalty for non-calculation questions is still there, yeah. Uh, there's just no penalty for calculation. It's like the exact same. There's no change. Okay. The only one change is that on the quiz bowl qualifier round, if you notice, the questions were accidentally on the slideshow. Um, that will not be true for the, the final round. We apologize for that. We need that. Come on now. <laughs> you got to write it down when I say it. Sorry. All right, I think we're going to get started. Um, just to make sure, we're going to do a final check. So the script, I will go through with the entire script. So I apologize. But this is just to make sure that everything is up and running. All righty. The structure for the final round is essentially the same as the one for the semifinal round. There should be no changes in points or question totals, except for the previous changes mentioned. Um, and of course, the change that now, since there are only two teams, um, deferrals will just go to the other team rather than being a free for all. Cool. First thing, everyone should still be on their team only Google Meets. Um, can I get our two proctors for our team Google Meets to give me a thumbs up? Who are, I don't know who our proctors for Fiona and, and Alyssa. All right, fantastic. Great. Uh, the buzzin.live game will also stay the same. So I just want to confirm everyone is still on the buzzin.live, right? I have Emily, Sharag, Tanish, Sam, Ritvik, Derek, and Riddick. Are there any players who are not on the <laughs> buzzin.live? All right, fantastic. Just like just a couple more details. Like the semifinal round, tally counter will verbally state the current score at the end of each section. Competitors may also request a score update at any time through the chat. Again, use the chat, and Jessica will try to get to you as soon as possible. Although, give her some time because she does have to type it up. Um, again, we'll do another warm-up question. It'll be the exact same warm-up question. That won't count for any points. This is just to make sure that all of your stuff works. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? All righty, Cheryl, can you pull up the slideshow and get started? Cheryl, just add it. Yeah. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. Give us one moment. So we're good to go. Fantastic. All righty, let's get started. We'll now be starting with our practice, our, yeah, our practice question. We'll now be starting our warm up question. Remember that this question does not count for any point. Warm up question. Order these market structures in order of least competitive to most competitive. Oligopoly, perfect, Ritvik. Monopoly, oligopoly, monopoly for competition. And then um, it was, uh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you've exceeded your perfect time. Competition, to... Perfect competition, perfect competition, I got you. All right, since this was a practice round, I'll just say, the answer was correct. 
uh, if this was a real question, three points would have been awarded to Rick's team. And we will now be moving on to the next question. All righty. Question one of question one of the non-calculation section for quiz bowl final round of the econ bowl. Question one. A person with a PhD in neuroscience working at a fast food chain is considered blank. Derek. Underemployment. That is correct. Uh, three points will be awarded to team 67, and we will now be moving on to the next question. <clears throat> question two. Give an example of the free rider problem and describe its effects on the demand curve. Ritvik. Uh, the national defense is an example of free rider effect because people who are not paying their taxes still get uh, nationally defended if they're living within the country. Uh, and that affects the demand curve because uh, the demand for like national defense is lower than it should be if everyone's paying. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to team 23, and we will now be moving on to the next question. All right. Also, for future reference, uh, we will cut you off. So please try to answer the question in a timely manner. All right. Question three, explain what excess capacity is and in which market structure it's most commonly found in. Chirag. Uh, excess capacity is when the supply is greater than the demand, and this is commonly found in command uh, market structures. That is incorrect. One point will be deducted from uh, the team, and the question will now be deferred. Cheryl. Ridvik. It's when the supply is greater than the demand and it's most frequent in monopolistic competitive market structures. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to that team and we will not be moving on to the next question. Question four. Explain how expansionary fiscal policy would affect the interest rate. Chirag. Uh, so deficit spending would, uh, in, the in the market for loanable funds, it would cause a crowding out effect, which would increase interest rates in the longer run. Um, yeah, that is correct. Uh, three points will be awarded to team 67. We will not be moving on to the next question. Question five, explain why monetary and fiscal policy are ineffective at combating inflation and unemployment at the same time. A shift in which curve in which direction would be required to de decrease inflation and unemployment at the same time? Question five, Shirag. Uh, so they're inefficient at combating uh, inflation and unemployment at the same time because uh, they both affect the aggregate demand curve, but the curve needed to solve those problems is the uh, short run aggregate supply curve. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to team 67, and we will now move on to the next question. Question six, a list of answers is required for this question. List the countries, Brazil, China, and Russia, in increasing order of difference between their Gini coefficient and the United States Gini coefficient. Question six. A list of answers is required for this question. List the countries, Brazil, China, and Russia, in increasing order of difference between their Gini coefficient and the United States Gini coefficient. Derek. Russia, China, Brazil. That is incorrect. One point will be deducted from team 67, and the question is now deferred to the other team. Uh, Red Vic. 
Russia, Brazil, China. That is also incorrect. No, okay. One point <laughs> <laughs> will be deducted from the other team, and we will now move on to the next question. Question seven. As the elasticity of demand decreases, will the profits of the producer increase or decrease more as they raise their prices? Ritvik. Increase. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Ritvik's team. And we will now be moving on to the next question. Wait, a quick pause, Frank. It says explain your answer. Uh, did, did oh yeah, it does. <laughs> um, oh yeah, could you just explain your answer real quick? Uh, yeah, so when there's a less elasticity of demand, then when you increase the price, right, there'll still be like a lot, a lot of people buying the the good, right? So your total revenue and your profits will increase. Whereas like if it's a higher elasticity of demand, right, when you increase the price, there'll be a lot less quantity, uh, what is it, demanded. And so like your total revenue and profit would decrease. Yeah, that works. All right. Question eight. What reason did China cite in their prohib prohibition of cryptocurrency? Shirag. Uh, the energy consumption of the graphics cards needed to produce uh, cryptocurrency was too high. Um, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from Team 67, and the question is now deferred. So again, question eight. What reason did China cite in their prohibition of cryptocurrency. Will we can we uh, pass right. or defer the question? The question is deferred by team twenty three. Yeah, we'll now be moving on to the next question. Question nine. Explain why the marginal cost curve intersects both the ABC and ATC at their minimum points. Explain why the marginal cost curve intersects both the ABC and the ATC at their minimum point. There are 20 seconds remaining to answer this question. The timer expired on answering this question, so the question is deferred, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 10. What is the name of the branch of economics that analyzes the development of developing countries? Shirag. Developmental economics. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Team 67 and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 11. What is the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve? Shirag. Uh, maintain a the, good inflation rate and promote price stability. Um, that is incorrect. One point will be deducted from team 67 and the question will now be deferred to the other team. 
The question is deferred to Tanish. You have 2.5 seconds. Uh, price stability and maintain uh, the maximum sustainable employment. That is correct. Three points will be awarded to Tanish's team. And we will now move on to the next question. Question 12. Three answers are required for this question. What are the three rates at which long-term capital gains are taxed at in the United States? Question 12. Three answers are required for this question. What are the three rates at which long-term capital gains are taxed at in the United States? Chirag. Zero, 15, and 20. That is correct. Three points will now be will be awarded to Team 67, and we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 13. What book is published eight times a year by the Federal Reserve as a summary of the current economic conditions? Question 13. What book is published eight times a year by the Federal Reserve as a sum to niche? The Beige Book. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to click on mute, you know. I clicked buzz. I, I was switching between. Right, it's close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Right. All right, that is correct. Three points will be awarded to Tanisha's team, and we'll now move on to the next question. Question 14. What did Nobel Prize winner David Card's natural experiment in New Jersey suggest about raising the minimum wage? Question 14. What did Nobel Prize winner David Card's natural experiment in New Jersey suggest about raising the minimum wage? Um, Cheryl. Chirag. Uh, was it that the rise in the wages didn't impact employment much or unemployment? Um, that is correct. Three points will be awarded to Team 67 and we'll now move on to the next question. That concludes the non-calculation section of the final round of the quiz bowl. At this point, the tallier will read a score check. Both teams have 14 points. All righty, very exciting. Well, now we're moving on to the calculation section. As a reminder, there is no penalty for missed questions in this section. Each question is worth five points for every correct answer, and the time limit has been extended to two minutes. The questions will not be on the slide and will be read verbally twice. Question 15, if the real GDP is 100 billion US dollars and the nominal GDP is 120 billion US dollars, what is the GDP deflator? Ritvik. 120. 120 billion dollars. Um, that is incorrect. Uh, no points will be deducted, but the question will now be deferred. Shirag. 120. Um, that is correct. Um, five points will be awarded to Team 67, and that we will now be moving on to the next question. Question 16. Let the marginal propensity to consume be 0.80 or 0 
find the amount of government spending needed to increase the real GDP by $3 billion. Question 16. If the, or let the marginal propensity to consume be 0.80 or 0 0.080, Ridvik. 600 million. That is correct. Five points will be awarded to the fixed team and we will now move on to the next question. Wait, can you question. repeat which team? 23. Question 17. If the marginal product of labor for 10 units of labor is 50 and the marginal product of capital for 20 units of capital is 25, what is the marginal rate of technical substitution at 10 units of labor and 20 units of capital? Question 17. If the marginal product of labor for 10 units, right, Vic? One. That is incorrect. No points will be deducted, but the question is now deferred. Question 17. If the marginal product of labor for 10 units of labor is 50, and the marginal product of capital for 20 units of capital is 25, what is the marginal rate of technical substitution at 10 units of labor and 20 units of capital? Derek. Two? Two? Oh uh, yeah, that is correct. Um, five points will be awarded to Team 67, and we'll now be moving on to the next question. Question 18. Three answers are required for this question. Assume the demand for Apple stands, Apple stands is the curve quantity equals the price times two minus 800 times price plus, or wait, sorry, the question will be reread. Question 18, three answers are required for this question. Assume the demand for Apple stands is the curve quantity equals the price squared minus 800 times price plus 200,000. What will be the lowest price and quantity Apple stands can possibly sell for? What type of good is the Apple stand? Three answers are required for this question. Assume the demand for Apple stands is the curve quantity equals to price squared minus 800 price, 800 times price plus 200,000. What will be the lowest price and quantity Apple stands can possibly sell for? What type of good is the Apple stand. Chirag. 
Uh, the price would be 400, the quantity would be 40,000, and the good is a Giffen good. Um, that is incorrect. No points will be deducted, but the question is now deferred. Ridvik. Price is 200. Uh, quantity is 8,000 and it's giving good. <sighs> that is incorrect. Uh, no points will be awarded. And the question will be now move on to the last question. Alrighty. Wait, actually, can the <laughs> moderator get a score check? Yes, um, team 23 Vink has 19 points and 67 the Eagles has 24 points. Okay. So we do have a tiebreaker question if needed. Alrighty. Question 19. Give me one thing for a reset. Hold up. Question 19. Let the Lorenz curve for circle land be y equals to one minus square root parentheses of one minus, minus x squared, where y is the proportion of the income and x is the proportion of the population. Find the Gini coefficient of circle land. Question 19, let the Lorenz curve for circle land be y equals to one minus square root whole of one minus x squared where y is the proportion of the income and x is the proportion of the population. Find the Gini coefficient of circle land. There's about one minute left to answer the question. You have 30 seconds remaining to answer the question. You have 10 seconds remaining to answer the question. Right, Vic. Root three, root two. That is incorrect. No points will be awarded and uh, the question will not be deferred. The timer has elapsed for this question. That concludes our non-calculation section of, or sorry, the calculation section and the quiz bowl round of the third annual Econ Bowl, the tallier will now read updated score report. 23 Vink has 19 points and 67 the Eagles has 24 points. Cool. We wanted to thank all of you for coming and extend a huge congratulations to each of our team for qualifying for the quiz bowl round itself. 
our Econ Bowl champion for this year is Team 20, wait, Team 67, uh, which is Team... The Eagles. The Eagles, yes. The Team Eagles. Uh, congratulations, and we welcome to the three champions we have so far. Thank you so much for participating in this year's Econ Bowl competition. To make, this, to make it this far is an incredible achievement. We hope that you will continue your economics journey with us at the YEI, whether that's through joining our community of seven plus econ clubs, attending another one of our events or competitions, or participating in a YEI exclusive program. You've succeeded in beating over 104 other teams in the third annual Youth Economics, econ, Youth Economics Initiative Econ Bowl, and we're excited to see what you can do at our future competition. Thank you and have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks so much for attending. A couple of logistical questions or comments. Um, the scores or the full scores for your written test round will be sent out to you individually um, after the exam. We'll also be sending out um, the prize logistics form. There will be some Google forms you need to fill out. Um, most likely this year, we will offer prizes through Amazon gift card um, and not through check, unfortunately, due to the fact that we are still virtual. Um, but if check is something that you would like over an Amazon gift card, you can write that as your preference and we'll try to accommodate you um, if possible. As well, for our first place team, um, our, the trading view codes for you guys will be issued through email as well in a recap email. Expect them in the next week or so. And the cash prizes will take two to three weeks um, because we need you to fill out the form and then we will handle the logistics on our end. So don't expect them to be immediate. Give us like two to three weeks to figure out the logistics. Um, and yeah. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask at this point. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming. And please go fill out the feedback form. We would really appreciate your comments and concerns.